praise offering this evening. Hey Amen. It's good to be in church Saturday night. A lot of things people are doing. No place I'd rather be than right here. Yes. I want to welcome everybody. Welcome our visitors. Welcome everybody streaming. Celebrate 22 years the Lord has given us here at Word of Life Tabernacle. That's quite an accomplishment nowadays. So many churches fold so quick. We're very thankful for what God's done for us here. Amen. Key of G, Brother Josh. Oh, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, yes. Sing hallelujah to our God.
don't know like I know what he's done for me and for you. Now that's true for each and every one of us. Amen. I've been listening to the message here recently over the past few days. The God who is rich in mercy. And without his mercy, I couldn't be standing here this evening. But I'm so thankful that there was one day that mercy did walk in. Took care of all the sin that I had. You know, it says that, that he's done away with them. It didn't just cover it up. But he, it, the Bible says that he, he did away with the judgments. So that means I was already guilty. I'd already stood and been tried. I was found guilty. But he came in and took care of all the judgments. Took all of that away. And offered me to a place to stand by, him, by his side this evening. I'm so thankful. If you know the song, Mercy Walked In, would you sing it with me this evening? If I got the right key. Well, I stood in the courtroom. The judge turned my way. It looks like you're guilty. Now what do you say? I spoke of your honor. I have no defense. Oh, but that's when mercy walked in oh mercy walked in and pleaded my case he called to the stand God saving grace the blood was presented that paid for my sins was forgiven when mercy walked in oh I stood there and I wondered oh how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free. Oh, my chains, they were broken. Oh, I felt born again. That very moment, oh, that mercy walked in oh mercy he walked in and he pleaded my case oh he called to the stand God saving grace the blood was and it paid for my sins I was forgiven oh when mercy walked in oh Jesus he walked in and he pleaded my case oh Called to the stand, oh God, saving grace. The blood was presented, and it paid for my sin. I was forgiven when my Jesus walked in. Won't you sing it with me tonight? Oh, for mercy, he walked in. Thank God he pleaded, pleading my case. Oh, he called to the stand. 
It was God's saving grace. For oh, the blood was presented that paid for my sins. I was forgiven. Oh, in mercy walked in. Aren't you thankful for that? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we're so, th so unworthy, but he made us worthy to receive. Give me, give me the key of C. I think it is key of C. This song just kind of goes right along with that. And this is, this is a, a song that is it's a cry of my heart. It says, the gulf that separated me from Christ my Lord. Oh, it was so vast, the crossing I could never fall. From where I was, to his domain it seemed so far I cried dear Lord I cannot come to where you are he came to me to me when I couldn't come to where he was he came to me oh that's why he died on For when I couldn't come to where he was, he came to me. He came to me when I was bound in chains of sin. Oh, he came to me when I possessed no hope within. He picked me up and drew me gently to his side. Oh, where today in his sweet love I now abide. He came to me. He came to me. When I couldn't come to where he was, he came to me. Oh, that's why he died on Calvary. For when I couldn't come to where he was, he came to me. Oh, he came to me. To me when I couldn't come to where he was he came to me oh that's why he died on Calvary 
For when I couldn't come to where he was, he came to me. Oh, he came to me. Yes, he came to me. When I couldn't come to where For when I couldn't come to where he was, he came to me. Amen. I'm so thankful he came to me. I wasn't looking. He knew right when to come, he knew right what to say, sermon to be preached, everything. I'm so thankful. We'll have a, Sister Divine has a song for us. You can stand for a minute. We'll, we'll sing this little song as she gets ready. E minor. Oh, thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my hand. Oh, yes, Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're the glory and the lifter of my hand. Oh, yes, Thou, O oh Lord, art a trouble me many there be that rise up against me and many there be which say of my soul there is no help for you in God well I cried unto the Lord my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I lay me down and slept when I awakened. Well, I knew the Lord, he has sustained me, and I will not be afraid. Thousand of demons who encamp themselves against me round about. No, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of demons who encamp themselves against me round about. For thou, O oh Lord, art a
sing it with all your heart. Oh, yes, thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. Oh, you're the glory and the lifter of my head. Your goodness. 
darkness is running after me, it's running after me. When I think I'm surrendered, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after me, it's running after me. of God. There's not enough words in the English language for us to tell him how truly thankful, how truly grateful we are. But one day we'll be able to take our time and say everything that we couldn't say on this side and just tell him how we feel. Amen. Certainly appreciate all those songs this evening. We'll go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer and say I'm very thankful for Brother Joseph and the family being here. I haven't seen Brother Joseph in quite a few years, so Certainly good to see him. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us this evening. Uh, if you can remember our pastor, um, he had a fever this morning. He's just been feeling really bad all day today. Brother Cammy, the same thing. Um, they're both tested negative for COVID, so we're thankful for that. But we just pray the Lord will just touch them tonight and give them what they have need of as the service is going on. And if you can remember Sister Angie Fuller, she has some tests next week. And we know God's got it all in control. We've seen God turn tests around for years here. And this is no different. Whether it's Sister Angie, Brother Jimmy, Sister Joan, whoever. God's got it all in control. Brother Kevin, if you could make your way up here and take us to the Lord in prayer. You stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. Who has a need on their heart this evening? Amen. Bless you, saints. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I stand in amaze here tonight, Lord, to come into your house with your people, Lord. We're a privileged people here tonight, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity that we have here tonight to, to lift your name up, Lord. There's many things we could have chosen to do, done here tonight, Lord, but, oh God, we have chosen to come into your house, Lord, to praise you and to honor you and give you thanks for what you have done for us in this life, Lord. And, oh God, you're not done with us yet, Lord. We're still, oh God, needing you here in this life, Lord. I pray, oh God, you come here tonight, Lord, in a special way. Walk the aisles among us, Lord. There's many needs that was called out, many needs that it was unspoken, Lord, but you know them, Lord. You always come with our, your, our needs on your mind, Lord. So I pray, oh God, as your presence is here tonight, Lord, I feel you close, Lord. Oh God, I know you're here to answer, oh God, our prayers, Lord. Oh God, when we pray and call out upon your name, we know it's not in vain, Lord. So, oh God, we ask you here tonight, Lord. We have friends here that's in need, Lord. Oh, God, if I could stand in the gap here tonight, Lord, I want to do my part, Lord. I don't want to be a coward, Lord, to bow down to the enemy. But, Lord, we have come here tonight, Lord, oh, God, willing to, oh, God, serve in your army here tonight, Lord. Oh, God, to take the sword or the two-edged sword, Lord. If you, Your prophet tells us, Lord, if we could find somebody that had a hand of faith that could take that sword, oh, God, to know when to use it, Lord. And to know how to use it. Oh God, give us the strength here tonight, Lord. To come against the enemy. Oh God, there's ones here that, oh God, have tests, Lord. Oh God, you know who that is, Lord. They hold a special place in my heart. Oh God. Do what needs to be done in our midst, Lord, here tonight, Lord. 
Oh God, I seen you in 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 the, oh God in your at war, Lord. I seen your hand at war, Lord. Oh God, and this is no different, Lord. I've seen you heal the sick, Lord. There's people here tonight. Sister LaDonna's here. Oh, God, the doctors give her up, said there's no more hope. And she stands here and worships with us here tonight, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. And there's other needs, oh, God. (sighs) Minister to them here tonight, Lord. Oh, God, have your way here tonight, Lord. I don't want to be a crybaby, but, Lord, oh, God, my heart bleeds, Lord, here tonight, Lord. Because, oh, God, I know what you've done for me and I know what you can do for them, Lord. Oh, God, minister to your people here tonight, Lord. Oh, God, I pray for Brother Daniel, Lord. 22 years you've given him, Lord. And, oh, God, I've seen him battle. I've seen him fight. I've seen the enemy come against him, Lord. But, oh, God, here he stands 22 years later as strong as ever, Lord. Oh, God, not backing down to the enemy, but facing him head to head, Lord. Knowing that he has the power through your blood, Lord, that it can overcome any enemy, Lord, in his life, Lord. We thank you for the 22 years you've given him, Lord. Oh, God, I know his message, his work. You've placed him here for a reason, Lord. His, his message has been vindicated, Lord. Oh, God, open our eyes and let us see, Lord, and let's get behind him and press the battle, Lord. Oh, God, have your way here tonight, Lord, as Brother Joseph come, Lord. He probably don't remember me, but I remember him, Brother Henry, Lord, when he taught Sunday school, Lord. I was in his Sunday school class, Lord, and I thank you for him, Lord. Oh, God, the things that he's taught in Sunday school, Lord, still abides within me now, Lord. Oh, so you use him here tonight, Lord. Bless him and his family, Lord, as they have come, and Lord, to, oh, God, to fight the battle with us, Lord. Oh, God, speak to your people here tonight. Break the bread of life to us, and we'll not fail to give you praise and honor and glory for us in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's just give the Lord another hand clap of praise this evening. Amen. Amen. I'm certainly looking forward to the word of the Lord tonight. As we sing this song, let's sing it quite a bit here. It's become kind of my, uh, my go-to. But as we, as we sing this song tonight, let's sing it for your neighbor. Let's sing it for someone here. There's people here hurting. There's people suffering. People who need an answer. And instead of inwardly saying, God, cover me with your peace, let's say, cover my neighbor. Cover my friend. Let's try this this evening. Oh, peace of God. Cover me, cover me, cover me, peace of God, cover me, through the storm, cover me, oh, only in you I
It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe this is one of the grandest privilege we have as people of God in this life to assemble yourselves in the house of the Lord. As you have well been acquainted with the virus and the hit and the miss. Sometimes we have church, sometimes we don't. But I'm so thankful tonight we have this grand opportunity to gather in the house of the Lord and worship the Lord Jesus Christ with you. You know, Satan didn't want this meeting to happen. He tried really hard today, he tried to bind the service, sent some storms back home. We had a good many more saints who were planning to come tonight, but storms came in. Shut the power off from the church, but you can't stop the Holy Ghost. Struck our beloved pastor with sickness, but I believe God will raise him out of the bed tonight. I'm not a special speaker, but I speak of someone who's special. And of a special message that God has given us. It's a privilege to be with you tonight. Bring you greetings from the saints in Arpeesburg, Tennessee, Believers Tabernacle, and all the saints. Appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight with you, Brother Daniel, Sister Lisa, to celebrate 22 years of ministry. You know, that speaks well of a servant of God. A lot of people will rise up with enthusiasm, feeling they have a call and can pastor a church. But it takes a real leader to stand through the storms, tests, and trials, and hardships. People going and coming and the different junctions and intervals in the ministry. I certainly celebrate this with them tonight. We're thankful to be here for this 22 years that God has given this wonderful congregation to you who have stood here deacons and associate ministers and musicians and by the way you have some fine musicians I certainly enjoy that tonight I'd like to invite you tonight certainly appreciate the musicians to go into the word of the Lord with us tonight and just going to take our time let the Holy Spirit speak we know that God is never in a hurry just wants us to come and settle down and just worship him tonight. I believe the Hirschberger family's here with us where they at. They made it in. Lord bless you. I remember at Chris, we had a, a caravan of people headed this way, young people, and I see a lot of young men, young ladies around here. I thought, wow, this would be good. Might be some marriages in the making. Who knows? <laughs> Amen. But you know, it didn't happen this time, but there's always another time. <laughs> so you pray real hard, okay? And the Lord knows, hey, how else are we going to meet? Right. You know, back in our day, we, you know, we went to camp meetings. That's how I met my wife. And, you know, I was living all the way in Canada, and I came to a camp meeting, tending to the Lord's business. And <laughs> lo and behold, God had other business on his mind. <laughs> you know, today it's all virtual virtual social social meetings it's not the same it's not the same it's different and it's taken away from the gatherings and meetings like these used to be flooded you know you had to put chairs out out the back and everywhere and but now everybody just wants to stream it just to see how many was there what the subject was all about if they don't like it then they click to somebody else but you know, we're living a different time. The world has disassociated us. It has disconnected us. But I, I'm thankful tonight that uh, Pastor uh, was determined to push through with the service. Because we, in our town, in our own state, we've had so many cancellations and 
One day you have service, the next day you don't. But I'm very grateful for these meetings. God bless you for coming out. And I believe you'll be blessed tonight. I want to invite you to go into the book of Isaiah chapter 10 while you're finding that. I'm very thankful to have my dear wife, Sister Deanna, here uh, with me. Also my eldest daughter, Bethany Haltom, and our two grand baby girls, Adeline Kate and Everly Rose, and then our youngest daughter, um, Naomi, who will soon be getting married, leaving me in an hem- empty nest. So you pray for me, saints. Amen. So just, we're just very happy to have them here with us. God bless you. We love you all so much. And you know, some of faces are familiar to me, some are not. I'm, I'm still having a little bit of amnesia, but maybe it'll all come back to me, okay? It's been some years, but we certainly appreciate the fellowship on the church here in uh, Covington. God bless you. Now, Isaiah chapter 10. This is, of course, God speaking here to the Israelites, God's will, chastise the Assyrians. But in there, in this passage of Scripture, God drops a Scripture that is pertaining to our time, our day, and our season. And many, many times, even through the Old Testament, you will see just little snapshots of scriptures that the Holy Spirit will drop into the mind and spirit of the prophets to make statements that was beyond their time. They spoke things that was not pertaining to Israel, but to the Gentile church. And it's just God in his master mind that knows how to put all of these things together. And we will see tonight how the Holy Spirit will bring it all uh, to our minds. In verses 27 of Isaiah chapter 10. And it shall come to pass in that day. I want you to notice that the Holy Spirit speaking through Isaiah here is designating a certain time. God doesn't just speak things just to fill uh, time or to uh, fill the, the pages of uh, what we call the Bible, there were reasons that God wrote certain things. And it said, and it shall come to pass in that day. Immediately God is pointing us to a day, a time, a season, a junction, a particular moment in history where God will do certain things. That his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So God, there's quite a bit there in that one passage of scripture, but by the help of the Holy Spirit, we'll break right into it tonight because God gave us a specific time. And behind behind all of that, he spoke of a, a, a deliverance that will be coming. Yeah. A time where the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. It was a time, a certain thing that will take place. And there will be an anointing which is an unction from God. It is a special, it's a special deutimus that comes from God. God isn't mincing words now. He's saying a certain time, of a certain age, there will be a people, hallelujah. They may have struggles in their lives. They may have shortcomings. They may have experienced hell on earth. But there will be an anointing that will rise up, hallelujah. And that anointing will break every yoke that is in our lives. I am so thankful tonight that the anointing still break the yoke. I don't care what it is. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with tonight. It does not matter what you've experienced, where you've been, where you're at tonight. I have come with a message to tell you that the yoke will be broken by the anointing. I want to to title the message tonight, Unchained 
by the anointing. Unchained by the anointing. Galatians chapter 5. Forgive me for taking my time, but I already feel at home. Satan, watch out. Amen. You see, this is not the first time we're meeting. We met somewhere before. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 and verses 1. Paul speaking out to the Galatians. He said, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We're free people. We're people of liberty. We're people that has been set free by the Holy Spirit. In our minds, we might be slaves to certain things, certain time, the place, when it happened, certain events. But in our spirits, we've been liberated by God's power. And our soul is now catching up to that revelation. You see, our bodies, we bear the mark of these things, of all the shortcomings, of the events of things that transpired within our lives. But deep down on the inside, of the inside, in the realms of the soul that's been regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit, there is a germ life that was laid there by the Holy Spirit. And that life is bringing us to the place we need to be tonight. Do you love him tonight? I want you to give the Lord a good welcome and a clap offering in this church. Holy Spirit, you're welcome tonight. You're welcome amongst us, Holy Spirit. How many would have a need tonight? You just slip your hands up to God. God, see the knees tonight. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, Lord, we just deem it such a privilege to stand in the presence of your people behind the pulpit of another uh, servant of God, an ambassador, a pastor, one of the highest callings, Lord, in this day, the shepherd of congregation. My heart tonight goes out to him, Lord. I pray, God, that before the service is over, through the preaching of the word, that you send your word out and it heal the people. We send the word out in the name of Jesus to every heart, soul, and mind under the sound of my voice. Let it not be just a mere man that's speaking, Lord, not just the words of humanity, But let there be an anointing in this place that will lift us beyond this mortal realm into the immortal realms. We pray, God, your presence will descend now amongst us. Speak to us the word of life. Touch pastor tonight. Straighten him in his body and mind. We love you tonight, Lord. We pray you'll have your way in this meeting. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you now. You may be seated. I am so grateful tonight that our God is a God of variety. That he did not make us all the same. But we are going to the same place. What if we all look the same? Wouldn't it be a funny world? How would you choose your mate? You might be with someone else's. But God made us different. He has wired us different. He has has anointed us in a way to be able to uh, understand one another. So tonight, having said that, I wish you'd bear with me tonight as uh, we're preaching the same word, just maybe a different gift a different angle of bringing things so tonight what I'll bring to you is certainly not a mystery because all the mysteries has been revealed we've passed the age and the time of specialty doctrines and we are moving now into the capstone of the bride of Christ 
We're living at the time where God is bringing this church out from uh, this carnality into the reality of his presence. I wish to define the anointing tonight. And if you are chained, bound to anything that is contrary to the will of God, your representation by predestination, it is the anointing that will destroy the yoke. Unchain and set you free tonight. Uh, the anointing destroys yokes, breaks chains, impregnates, rejuvenates, restores, separates, and consecrates. It is the knighthood given to those who are the predestinated seed and willing to stand on the battlefield Amen. and hold up the blood-stained banner of the bleeding words. Amen. I believe that we are living in a time where we are seeing a fast, rapid maturity of the bride of Christ. Amen. We're seeing things unfolding fast before Amen. our eyes. Amen. We have no time now to just try to just slack off. I believe it is a rapid acceleration of the church of a living God. We have no time for petty things, for little small things that are, that are, are not essential to God tonight. I leave my life up to him to clean me by the Holy Spirit. It is him that forgives. It is him that shows mercy. It is him that justifies tonight. And our lives are placed in his hands. But where we stand tonight, we are standing at a very critical place. We are standing at also a most glorious place. I believe we're staring the rapture right in his face. I believe any moment now, there can be a translation anointing that sweeps over the church of God. Do you believe that? I believe we can feel it. There's a magnet, there's an anointing, there's a power of God that's drawing the church up to a higher realm with him tonight. You see what's happening in Ukraine and Russia at this time. And we're not naive to the scripture to know that Isaiah or Ezekiel rather well prophesy in Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39 that the a king will come from the great north. And Gog and Magog will come against Israel. And we know what is speaking of tonight. We know exactly by the prophecies that we're living at the brink of the rapture. And we know that Gog itself is the leader over Magog. Going back in history showing that Magog, if you look at Israel, straight up north from Israel is directly over to Russia. Meshach has been interpreted as Moscow. We see that Magog in the Hebrew is broken down to a place called Rosh, R-O-S-H, interpreting Russia. And we see things are now moving in as dimension as fast as we see it. We know that the bride is getting ready to escape out of Laosia. Because we know when these things happen that the bride will be gone. Listen church, Revelation 13 does not pertain to the bride. She will not be here on earth during the time of the buying and the selling. Yes, we'll feel some f form of persecution, but not a tribulation. That is for the church. And I want to bring you up to speed and let you know everything is setting right on targets. There's no fear in the bride's hearts. We know where we're at. Yes, Russia's got a bomb with America's name on it. We know that was part of the plan where Magog will try to bomb Israel itself. And a great attack in the time of Armageddon with 10 Arab nations that will come against that, uh, that great city of God. But we know that God will defend her. Amen. We know the bride will be at that time with Jesus Christ to defend uh, Israel. You believe it? Amen. What a time we see these things 
transpiring before us. I believe Brother Bram said in Invisible Union 1965, he said, think your garments washed by the water of the bleeding word. The word became blood. The word bled for you and you're washed in the bleeding word. The word's bleeding, the life of God in the word and the word was bled for you that you might be washed from the filth of these prostitutes and be clean and sanctified by the washing of the water of the word makes your mind, heart stays on God and on his word. I believe the power of God is within the bleeding word to totally eradicate every stronghold in our lives. Everything, it makes no matter what it is. There's no small or big sin in God's sight. The Bible said all of sin and can come short of the glory of God. So this anointing will destroy the yokes. Now, yoke is a wooden beam being placed on the neck of the bulls in the olden days and oxen to make them draw carts or to plow the fields. The beam is called the yoke. And when the beam is placed on the yoke of the neck of the bullocks and bound, they become slaves and cannot run freely on their own. Thus the animal bound to the yoke is enslaved. Uh, this device was also used when they captured slaves and such like because of the weight of it and made it impossible for him to run or even put up a fight. But the anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing destroys the yoke. Look, in some form or another, we have all been in bondage. We have all been enslaved in something in our lives. If it is not something that is visual, and it's something that is in the invisible within us. We all struggle uh, with things in our lives. Whether outwardly or inwardly, there are things there that we battle against in our lives. Many times we may look at someone and uh, just on the outside, you know, everything just looks really nice, smiling, and but you know, down on the inside, they may be uh, they may be hurting like hell. There's something going on inside of them that's that's just beyond what you can ever perceive. I say that to say this, that we all come to that place in our lives. We notice that because that the anointing breaks the yoke, it is important to understand what uh, the prophet Isaiah was saying here concerning an anointing at a specific time. He said, at that day, there'll be an anointing. There'll be a power of God in the church again that will strengthen the people of God. Now I look across this audience here tonight and I see people from different backgrounds of life. Some of you perhaps came out of a a Methodist or Baptist or Catholicist, I don't know, the variety of what is here, but we all came out of something. We came out of some organized religion. And we understand that God allowed time to pass and here we are today. Because in God's mind, you were a son of God. You were a germ seed of God. And here you are tonight by God's foreknowledge that has decreed you to be sitting in the service tonight. Not just to hear a man, but to hear the eternal word of God that set our souls free tonight. This anointing will destroy the yokes. I want to just lay a little background before I start preaching because 
I believe that it's important for us to know where we stand in this day. Because we see a lot of things that's happening. Not only in the church world, but in our ranks. We see there has been a great falling away. We see a doctrinal cults. We see groups that are formed around certain uh, pet doctrines. Uh, many churches have adopted their own principles and criteria and standards. But we understand that we have been given a sure word of prophecy. That in that day, which is this day, there will be an anointing. And by that anointing, the, the, the yoke will be destroyed in our lives. Now I want you to watch this now. That this blood word has power to unleash any chains of bondage that binds a believer tonight. Satan stands powerless before the anointing of this message. We're not just preaching about a man. It isn't just quoting quotes. We're talking about the reality of what God has done in this age. To the people who have submitted their lives to the headship of the Holy Spirit. Look, we're not reforming the church. The days of reformation is over. We're living at the time of restoration of the bright tree. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see one of the spirits that we're battling as God called pastor in this message is ministry rising up, trying to reform the people to take them back to organization. But friends, the days for those things are expired. They're over. There's a church. There's a people. There are pastors like your pastor who is feeding you the unadulterated word, getting you ready for the rapture of the bride. You see, the spoken word has power to undo and reverse any condition or circumstances in your life. You can be unchained by this anointing. No longer a slave of circumstances. You see, many are bound with the chains of habits and addictions. Sin is the chain Satan places on man today that enslaves him and calls him to be bound. When we go back to Eden, we understand that Satan sprayed the whole humanity, human race with the poison of unbelief. And since then, many are unable to break free from ungodly, deplorable habits that holds them in bondage. But not to the germatized seed of God tonight. Not to the germatized seed of God. I believe that God has brought us a place tonight to recognize who we are in this hour. You see, he's tried, to, uh, he's tried to do everything he can to detour you from your true purpose in this life. You only drop out of time into this space here that we call eternity, into the space called time for a purpose. And God had to plant that seed in the earth somewhere for it to be developed. It could not be placed in Mars or Venus or, or some other uh, uh, a space out there on the world. It had to be planted in the earth itself to be germatized. In the message, God's power of transformation, Brett Bram said he tried to attempt, speaking of Jesus, him and doing the wrong things, but he couldn't do it. Why? He had been sprayed with the repellent of predestination. It can't be deceived. No, sir. Neither can it be in the bride of Christ. You have been sprayed with the repellent of predestination. Satan can do everything he can to your mind, to your family, to your health, to your church. But he cannot destroy that seed that's on the inside. You have been sprayed with the repellent a 
our predestination. I love it. Yes, Satan may have sprayed you with unbelief. No telling what all you've encountered this week. He lies to us every day. Lies to our mind. Brings up things about our family, our household, our church, our, our environment, our associates. The greatest battle is still raging in the mind. But I've got the antidote tonight for Satan. Jesus Christ has sprayed us with a repellent of predestination. Do you believe it tonight? You see, some, uh, sometimes we get infected uh, with amnesia and the memories of the past will keep drawing us back to an enslaved mind. It does. I think about the story of an elephant trainer. They take an elephant and place the chain around his leg and the other end to a stake in the ground. And they say that the elephant tries to pull, but the chain hurts him. So in, he becomes conditioned to only being able to go so far. So he refuses to make a run for it because he remembers what he felt when the chain was around his leg. And although he's free in his mind, the memory is there and that is what has him bound to where he's at. Are you with me tonight? They may set the elephant free and say, you can go. But because you understand, something has been engraved in his memory. Some hurt, something that has transpired only causes him to go so far. Because he is in a yoke. That's why the Bible says, be not confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, the anointing by this revealed word has freed us from our enslaved minds. The revelation that God has given us is washing us clean tonight. Praise God. It is washing the church clean tonight. Even though in our minds we may have memories of time, place, and events that has created an enormous amount of pain in our lives. The message to you tonight is that the Holy Spirit is setting us free by the revelation of who we are tonight. God does not judge us and what we are now to be the pride of Christ is what he's already predestinated for us before the foundation of the world. You believe it tonight? We're not just now uh, earning merits to become the wife of God. Do you not realize that God understood every failure you would have in your life? Every time you will mess up? Every shortcomings you will have? Every time you would uh, tell a lie and, 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 and get drawn into a deplorable things? God knew all those things. Did it change God's mind? Absolutely not. You are indelibly marked upon the mind of God. There is no power in hell can ever shake the church from that place. You believe it tonight? So it is the anointing by the revealed word that frees us tonight. Reminds me of a story uh, told, uh, uh, Brother Bram told of a, of a crow. Your pastor has said it many times, Johnny Crow, you understand? Many are chained uh, uh, to the spirit of infirmities as we know it. Same thing with Johnny, Johnny Crow. He was tied to the one place even though all the other birds came over and said, the farmer set you free. Why don't you go with us down south? He said, no, I can't. Because you understand, he was chained in his minds. And I'm working on your minds right now. I'm working on your spirits to let you know you've got to press beyond that. You've got to get out of your minds. Get out of your spirits. Move into the realms of the Holy Spirit tonight. 
when Jesus was preaching in a synagogue, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Chain was bowed together, the Bible says. Could no wise lift her up as the scripture expounds. She was chained with a condition. She was bowed. She was, uh, she was uh, uh, in, uh, in a condition that uh, mentally you and I could not even uh, comprehend. She was chained with a condition. She was bowed, and she was not in pain. You see, her hunched back was her chain. She couldn't look up because her vision was focused on the ground. And this woman was chained to constantly looking down, but her release wasn't on the ground. Jesus said, saw her and said in Luke 3, 13 and 16, and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound low these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? He's asking a question. Satan had had bowed her with the chain of infirmity for 18 years. But Jesus Christ, the anointed word, healed her miraculously. She was a daughter of Abraham, and that predestinated seed of God was laying in her, went into operation. How many times we come to that place? Many of you tonight, perhaps you're struggling with a certain uh, ailments in your bodies. Some of it may be hereditary. Some of it are just things that, that, that has happened to you. It's caused you to be in a place of, of where you, you just, you're trying to overcome, you're trying to, to serve God, but it's really hard to serve God when you're in a sick body. You're crying out to God for healing. You're crying out to God to deliver you from this, uh, from this infirmity in your life. And this woman here in the scripture, the Bible tells us that she was the daughter of Abraham. And she was a predestinated uh, seed of God. And because that, that predestinated seed of God was in her, that germ seed that was there went into operation. Aren't you thankful tonight that so many times you could have messed up, you could have come short. You thought this was the day of grace and ended in your life. But all of a sudden, that germ seed of God inside of you goes into operation. I love what Red Bram said in a message, Invisible Union of the Bride of Christ. He said, when the seed of God is in operation through you, that's the word of God. Amen. When the seed of God is an operation through you, that's the word of God. Amen. Friends, let me say this. Amen. We sometimes, you know, we treat, we treat ourselves as though we are our own overcomers. Oh we, we, we cannot overcome anything. Right. Only Christ has overcome for us. Amen. All we do is we yield to him Amen. knowing that he's able to take us through. Amen. Canaan's land is a land of overcoming. But Canaan also represents the Holy Ghost. And you cannot overcome unless you have the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit, seed of God, is on the inside of you, it will go into operation. How many times we came so close, so close, so very close to messing up. So very close. This, to, this, this is going to be the biggest disgrace that ever happened and suddenly there seemed to be a little something that comes from the inside that rises up. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that goes into operation in your lives. We look back upon our lives and we think, Lord, how in the world did I make it through that? How in the world did I make it through that? That seed of God goes to operation in your life. It's the anointing I'm speaking about tonight. 
Well, I ask you tonight, how long are you going to be bound, child of God? Under the revealed word, there's deliver deliverance, and it has the power to destroy yokes. You believe that? Yeah. And if you want tonight to be free from any bondage, whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it's mentally, whether it's oppression or depression, I want you to know we have been given the anointing in this age to break every yoke that is in our lives. You believe that? I believe, Brother Brown said, the message God's chosen place of worship on January 20, 90, 1965. He said, we're nearing the time, Lord, when complete deliverance will be given to your children. Can you say amen? This is the time of deliverance. This is the hour of deliverance. This is the time. It makes no difference what it is. God has promised amen. deliverance is in our midst. And he's given us the anointing to deliver us from the things that box us down and hold us victims tonight. I believe that this revealed word has the bleach of the blood that eradicates sin and breaks chains in our lives. You believe this? You believe this tonight? I'm speaking of our message tonight. I'm speaking of our message is of what I speak of tonight. Listen, This anointing that God has given us tonight. It's only for a special class of people. That this word has attracted their attention. I see some of you sitting here. I see Mike. God bless you, Brother Mike. Amen. How God, through his grace, allowed this unction of the anointing to pass over your life, my friend. And here you are tonight, probably few or maybe the only one, I don't know, in your family that somehow it's attracted your attention. You've seen great services. You've seen the power of Pentecost. You've seen healing, discernments. Don't tell me they don't have it. Don't tell me Pentecost don't have that. But friends, I'll tell you, there's anointing that is amongst us. That's greater than this flesh. Greater than what our minds can conceive. It has the power to one day blast us out of this pest house into a brand new word house that God has prepared for us. A special class of people. Think about yourselves tonight. And bear with me tonight. Let me just labor just a little while tonight. Just to let you know, friends, uh, bring you up to speed. You're not just anybody. You're not just sitting here by mishaps. You're not just here because grandmother told you about the prophet and grandfather was in a message. You're here because uh, that you are in God's mind before the creation of the earth. You believe it? Yes. Yes. Sin is not here with a shock in uh, January the 18th or February, rather, 1965. Uh, Brother Brown made a statement. He said, and I say that there is an elected church somewhere in this world that's pulling out and set aside from those things that the manifestation of God has attracted yes. its attention. Right. It's not fancy preaching that grabs my attention. Yes. It's the anointing. Yes. The anointing in this age. Hallelujah. 
that's grab a hold of that germ seed on the inside of my life. I love that he said, the manifestation of God has attracted its attention. Hey, let me tell you something, friends. We're not missing words tonight. We're not playing games. We're not here to mesmerize you with fancy words and specialty phrases. We're here to tell you that you're a child of God. And it makes no difference what you're dealing with. You're coming out to the other side. Amen. For God has spoken it tonight. And just as sure as I'm standing here, God's going to bring you out. And when you come out, you're coming out with everything. Father is coming. Father is coming. Church is coming. Hallelujah. When Israel walked out of Egypt, they brought out everything with them. Not one hoof was left behind. Not one person was left behind. They came out with everything. There was an anointing that brought them out. You believe it? Hallelujah. Who is this that I see coming out of the wilderness? Amen. When we come out of Egypt, we are going to rob the Egyptians. Who is this that's dressed in gold, dressed in silver? The redemption of God's blessing upon our lives. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not coming out empty-handed. You need to tell somebody right now who's sitting beside you, move over. Because Johnny is coming. Mary is coming. And Lucy is coming. Uncle Johnny is coming. Hallelujah. This bride will not leave here without anyone else. There's a power of anointing that will draw us out of this place. The manifestation of God has attracted our attention. We're not looking at where they're at and, and what they're doing. No. You may have a wayward son right now, maybe out, or, or a husband, or an aunt, or some member. I don't know. But wherever they're at tonight, they're coming tonight. Yes. Yes, Turn to your neighbor right now and tell him they're coming. coming. You believe it? Yes. They're coming. Yes. They're on their way. Yes. You believe it? Yes. They're on their way. Yes. Because the anointing said they're on their way tonight. You believe it? Spoken word, anointing. Original seed, word, anointing. The anointing is already in you. This anointing is with you. Do you believe it? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me pose a question in your mind tonight. When you were in the world carousing, when you were party, partying every uh, Saturday night and Sunday and Friday nights, when you were in the hunky tonks and, and all the stuff that was going on, uh, and, and, uh, and, and do you think that God thought less of you then than he is now? No. You know what the difference is? The anointing touched your life and woke up that seed on the inside of you. And suddenly you realize that that's not the real you. The real you is coming. Touch yourself right now and say, the real me is coming. The real me is coming. This is not even the real me. Come on, church. I know you love yourself. And you're a nice looking church. You're beautiful people. But that's not even the real you. The real you is coming. Your theophany is coming. Your glorified body is coming. Your brand new body is coming. Hallelujah. You believe it? I don't know about you, but every time I look in the mirror, man, there's a new gray hair, a new wrinkle somewhere. Amen. The world's trying to give you Botox and everything else. What you need is the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Botox isn't going to change you. The Holy Ghost will. Yeah. Hallelujah. The best way, sisters, to get a wrinkle out of your face is get touched by this anointing. That's right. It'll tighten your face up. Amen. The Holy Ghost knows how to do it. It makes you look new again. Hey, it's the truth. You take someone who used to be in church, they had that glow upon their face. 
Yeah. They, they look so healthy. Mm -hmm. They're looking a prime yeah. of life. And they backslide uh, in, in, just, uh, in just a little while back. Oh. In such a short time, you see them within months, mm -hmm. they look all droopy. Yeah. Saggy. Everybody say it with me. Saggy. It's like, what happened to you? You left the presence of the anointing. But in the moment's time, hallelujah, when the anointing touched your lives, friends, it spins you around. My. You remember how innocent people used to be? Suddenly the spirit got on them, they get out in the world, they become like a pussycat. I mean, you pet them one way, and boy, there every, everything is all right. Just drag your hands back the other way one time. Man, they become a lion, a raging lion. But let the anointing touch their lives one time. That's what I'm speaking of tonight. It's this anointing, this word, this power breaks the yoke in our lives. You believe it. Brother Bram said on a message, who do you say this is? 1964 in December the 27th. I trust this is all right with you tonight. I already told you I'm not a special speaker, but I speak of a special one, Jesus Christ. He said that's the way the message is. You can't sympathize with it and say it's right. You've got to take it yourself to become part of it. Then you and the message become one. Then the anointings with you. Come on, church. Then the anointing is with you. You're unchained by the anointing. The same anointing that was upon the prophet, it's the same anointing that's on the bride. Praise the Lord Jesus. He said, then how would that be? The word is in us would be the same anointed word. That is the oneness of God. See, the oneness of God is the word anointed in you. See, then you become a son, a Messiah of the age. Oh, praise God. Y'all not hearing me tonight. Then you become a Messiah of the age. Praise the Lord Jesus. Many of you came in here tonight, you were feeling melancholy, you felt down, something didn't go right with you, maybe the boss cheated you from your check, maybe somebody spoke an ugly word to you, maybe you had some cross words uh, with your spouse, maybe the weather has had something to do with your moods, I don't know, but you're here tonight under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the anointing is trying to crack that yoke in your lives to tell you that the anointing is in you tonight. You believe that? Amen. I love that. He said the word anointed in you, see, then you become a son of Messiah of that age. His ministry is in the bride, which is his body. Do you believe that? Amen. What should I do with Jesus called Christ? The prophet said, if you can yield to what's inside of you. Amen. Can you do it tonight? Amen. If you can yield to what's inside of you. Hallelujah. Amen. In me, there's no good. A liar, a luster, a, a, a rotten, no good, a low down snake. But I'm telling you, that seed of life that's heard the shout of this age is bringing me to my identity. You realize that? You realize tonight this is the biggest enemy you've got? It's the serpent slash. You've got to crucify it. That's right. You believe that? Hallelujah. I don't care how long you've been in the message. I, I, how long you've been serving God. This old rotten flesh is going to give you trouble. Can you say amen? It's going to give you trouble. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a clap offering. It's going to want to lie. It's going to want to lust. It's going to want to tell things that are untrue. Come on, church. I'm talking to you tonight. I'm speaking. That serpent has got to be crucified. Hallelujah. You've got to slay that serpent tonight. Oh, one of Paul said, me, there's no good. Hallelujah. There's no good in the flesh. Amen. There's no righteousness in me. It's filthy rags. 
But praise God, the anointing has set me free tonight in my spirit, in my mind, and in my soul tonight. You believe it? He said, if you can yield to what's inside of you. Lord, I just love you so much. Lord, I've got problems on the outside. What else do you expect? You're going to have problems. Listen, if you're perfect, you don't need to be here tonight. Come on, church. But none of us has reached that perfection in the flesh. The perfection is not in the flesh. The perfection is in the soul. And the soul has already been perfected. Come on. Let's have church tonight. The soul has already been perfected. Praise the Lord. The soul will harness the flesh. Make, 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 no, make no mistakes about that. Amen. You see, friends, if you can yield to what's inside of you. Yes, sir. I think of Pastor Daniel gets an answer tonight. After 22 years of pastoring this church, I remember when he started and, and the Lord placed that gift upon his life, him and Sister Lisa, and they started out. And they've had a lot of ridicule, a lot of, a lot of trials, a lot of arrows, a lot of hardship. But I want to say this in his favor tonight. You see, there was something that God placed there that people couldn't see, but God saw it. That's why there's a church here in Covington tonight. Because God saw that gift that was there. You see, we don't see those things. But God sees them. And it's not for us to see it, but to believe it and know that God has done it. If you can yield to what's inside of you. You see, the prophet's anointing of the pillar of fire wakes up the germ seed of God in you. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. The pillar of fire over the prophet's head wakes up the germ seed in the bride of Christ. Listen, I'm not disputing anyone or maybe throwing off any accusations and doubts or unbelief to anybody concerning the pillar of fire, but I believe that we have seen the pillar of fire in this age. Yes, sir. You believe that? Amen. It was the same God that led the children of Israel. Amen. God uh, above us, God with us, now God in us. Right. It's the same pillar of fire. Amen. And I believe that pillar of fire has not left the bride. I'm not looking for another anointing. I'm not shopping for another Messiah. I'm not looking for another Elijah. There could be another, not, could not be another on the scene. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Bram said, stay with the same plain message. That's all you got to do. Stay with the same plain message. It's going to give you rapturing faith. Hallelujah. Seven thunders is going to wake the bride up. And I believe she's woken up by the thunders. You believe that? Amen. The seven written seals has been revealed. Amen. But on the back side of the book, there were seven unknown thunders. And I believe they've been thundering in this age to wake up the bride, to give her rapturing faith, to get out of this best house. You believe it? Hallelujah. Listen, friends, the thunders is the voice of God. Amen. When the seven seals was opened up. Amen. Beside the seven written seals, there were seven unknown thunders on the back side of the book. You know what that was? Rapturing faint messages. Who is this Melchizedek? The rapture. How can I overcome? Shalom. Amen. Christ is revealed in his own words. Proving its words, yeah. its rapturing faith yeah. from the church Hallelujah. is the anointing that unleashed and yeah. sets us free Praise tonight. Yeah. You believe it? Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But you see, I believe that God is continuing unfolding himself through, the, through those messages. It's like a Roman candle. It keeps illuminating. It keeps illuminating by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your pastor will come, take that same message and preach it. And God just keeps illuminating the word to you. Make it clearer and clearer and clearer. By what? The anointing. You believe it? In a message, identify a masterpiece of God. Not in the 64, uh, August of, uh, or December the, uh, the 5th. 
He said the bride is part of him. She's part of him. The word for that day. The bride becomes part of that word. She is him. She is him. Do you believe that? You've got to recognize your position in the word tonight. Hallelujah. We read it in Isaiah. It says in that day. Hallelujah. Amen. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Whose message? Mine? Or anyone else's? No, sir. Amen. We have no other message to bring to you tonight of what has already been brought to the church. The best we can do as pastors is to point you to the anointing that God has brought in this age. And say, hallelujah, it's that anointing that has brought us to where we're at tonight by God's grace. Hallelujah, you believe it. Pergamos church ages, uh, the prophet says, uh, they and the bride will be so much like him that they will even be in his very image. They will be the very manifestation of the word, of the word of the living God. Do you believe that? Whatever lean tonight, whatever lean Satan has placed upon you, your children or your destiny, God can unchain them tonight by the anointing. You believe that? I'm talking about habitual things. I'm talking about generational curses that has been upon your life can be destroyed by the anointing. You believe that? How many times am I listening to a tape and there's certain things in my mind I'm struggling with and suddenly the anointing will strike me and that thing's gone. Why? Because the anointing breaks the yoke. It destroys the yokes within our lives. We have the anointed word for this age that sets us free from Satan's traps. Do you believe that? I believe it's time that the bride of Christ start claiming our inheritance. Remember, your inheritance is your family. Your inheritance is your family. Your inheritance is your house. Your inheritance is your, is your sanity. Your inheritance is everything that God has for you. People worrying about this Russia and Ukraine and all these things happening. None of that pertains to us. The bride will be out of here. That's how close we are to the rapture. A third world war can strike right now and the bride has gone out of here. Listen, before the third world war starts, the bride will be in glory. You believe that? She will not go through the tribulation period. Hallelujah. You believe it? Praise God. I know there's all sorts of doctrine of pre-tribulation within the message. And friends, I say this to you. You're either bride or you're not bride. There's no such thing as pre-tribulation. You've already been purified by Malachi's fourth message. Amen. That has set your spirit and soul free by the Holy Ghost. You believe it? You love him? We have an inheritance. The bride of Christ As the bride of Christ, we need to start claiming our inheritance. You believe that? Listen, your inheritance is in Canaan's land. You've got to go in there and overcome it by the Holy Ghost. Your inheritance is your family, is your sanity. You believe that? People are worrying about what's going to happen to the price of gas and economics and and the bride is going to, what what is the bride going to do? Let me tell you something. You are the only group of people upon the face of the earth that God will take care of and care for and watch over. You need not to worry about your finances. You need not to worry about your health. Come on, church. Because we won't be here in Revelation 13. That's when the power of buying and selling will be implemented upon the foolish virgins. But the bride will be in glory. You know what I mean? God will see to it. You don't have to worry about your economics. You don't need to worry about those things. God's going to take care of you. Praise the Lord. So my brother Joseph, I'm really having a hard time with my finances. I'm really struggling. Well, you know what? Get a job and go to work. Hello, are you home? That has nothing to do with God. God said he's going to take care of you. You will not be here in the buying and selling. This nation will go busted, but not the bride of Christ. Praise the Lord. 
Some of you businessmen worrying about your business, your economics, your finances, all these things. You mean to tell me that God's going to take a bride, place her in his mind, knew her before the foundation of the world, plant the seed in her in Lehoshia, watch over all these years to allow the stupid, foolish economy to buckle her? Absolutely not. You should be shouting by now. Oh, I'm broke, I'm broke, I'm broke. Like I said, get a job and go to work. And God's going to multiply it. But you got to give some, God something to work with. Are you with me now? Praise the Lord. Aren't you thankful? The bride's in glory. Listen, maybe tomorrow I'll touch on it on the calendar of events. There's actually 11 different events that will transpire when the bride leaves here and is in glory. And we apply these events to the church here. That's the church, not the bride. We are not the church. We are the bride. We are not the church. We are the bride. Can you get the church? Bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ, not the church. Hallelujah. I like what Brother Brown said in Harry Hymn, 1957, on March the 22nd. He said, I think that's just about where our churches are getting. We're children of God, but we're losing our inheritance. Jubilee year, 1962, uh, November or October 22nd, he says, but when we get everything so easy, then we just slip along. And the first thing you know, we've gone out from these things, uh, losing our inheritance. God wants to bless you tonight. Listen, this message is a prosperity message. This anointing tells you that God cares from you from the time that you draw your first breath to the time that you take, you, you let out and exhale the last breath from your body. God will take care of you. But our focus is on Jesus Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Then all these things shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Do you love him tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your priorities straight and God will take care of you. God wants to bless you. God wants to anoint you. God wants to lift you up. In Genesis 26, how long have I been preaching? According to my time, it's 8 o'clock. What's your saying? Can I go just a little while longer? Church, I want to encourage you. I'm not. I'm here to just put my shoulder to the, to the grind with, with Pastor, Amen. his wife and family. We've Amen. known each other for years. Amen. Not only are we close friends, but we, we're, we're leaders on the front line. Yeah. We understand the strain that goes with mm-hmm. leading a group. I'm just here to encourage you, to let you know where we're at. That's right. That you can be unchained by the anointing. Amen. I believe, it's, frankly, it's doing that tonight. In Genesis chapter 26, there was a time in the life of Isaac that he had to reclaim a portion of his inheritance. Abraham had left an inheritance uh, of his uh, son, and this inheritance consists of some valuable wells. Water was uh, a valuable, understand, a valuable commodity in that day and age. And the Philistines will rob Isaac of that inheritance and they will fill the well up and stop the water. And Isaac did, did not sit idle by and allow the enemy to destroy what was rightly his. The Bible said that he took the proper step to reclaim what the enemy had taken from him. These wells of inheritance are your God-given rights in every promises of God tonight. Do you realize that? You know, just because your grandmother, you know, had a hereditary a type of, um, of a rare disease doesn't mean that you have to carry that same lineage. Simply because your family tree was consist of certain ailments that means that you have to inherit those things, friends. 
simply because there was certain bad blood in your family doesn't mean uh, that you have to carry the same things today. Are you with me tonight? The Holy Spirit by the anointing can clear that up in just a second. Can you believe that? You know, it's strange that we want to go back and talk about old great-great-grandmother such and such when they came over from such and such place and they had this uh, certain disease or they, they had this certain disorder in their body. Friend, you don't have to live under those verdicts. I'm here to tell you, as a daughter, a son, and a daughter of God in this hour, you can rise up to your place and say, God, by your grace, I can overcome it. How many believe that tonight? I can overcome it. Praise God. Grandma and Grandpa may not have got the Holy Ghost, but thank God I did. And when I did, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all unrighteousness. You see, there are so many diseases in the land right now, so many things that have no name for them. They've got to give them all kinds of fancy names. But it's nothing but that old devil. You can have put the Holy Ghost on it and running out of your bodies tonight. Running out of your mind, your spirit, your family, your home, your church, your prayer lives tonight. Everything God has promised you tonight is yours. Perhaps somewhere along the way your enemy is coming along and has robbed you of these wells of inheritance. Maybe he has taken certain steps to fill in those spiritual wells in your life. The enemy has been after your inheritance. He wants uh, to deny you of your God-given wells that God has placed in your lives. How many are believing for their loved ones? Lift your hands up. How many are believing for your healing? How many believe in God for something in your life that you're trying to overcome? Amen. We all are. Amen. We all are. But tonight God is able to do that. Amen. He's able to do it through the preaching of the gospel tonight. Amen. Because the Bible said he sent his word out and he healed the people tonight. Amen. You believe it? Amen. We have the legal right to proclaim what Satan has stolen from us in Jesus' name. And I believe we must recover what we have lost. Perhaps the devil has robbed you of your children, of your spiritual heritage as well. We must act now tonight. Say this chronic sickness cannot cripple me. This chronic sickness is not gonna, it's not gonna mess with me. This diabetes or this chronic stomach problem or this back problem or this chronic disorder in my body don't have to hold me bound tonight because I have the power of the Holy Spirit to walk out of here set free by the Holy Ghost. You believe it? The anointing of this age is in the prophet's message to break every yoke and reclaim claim your inheritance tonight. The prophet's anointing resets your past, present, and future. Do you believe that? Yes. Listen, friends. It is not less fortunate or we are not less of a person simply because we are under the voice of that shout. It is the power of God through those messages that enable us to get strength to overcome. You believe that? Hallelujah. I believe that tonight. I believe the prophet's anointing can reset your past, present, and future. I know, friends, the message is still just as real. Amen. And just as powerful and just as anointed as when Brother Branham was here. You believe that? The breach between the seven church age and the seven seal. Let me give you a quick uh, quote as I try to bring this in, up to a, a climax. He said, what is the book of redemption? The title deed, abstract, the title lead. You say abstract, what does it do? Abstract means it searches all the way back to its beginning. Hallelujah. Like that drop of ink this morning, it struck the bleach. 
It went all the way back when sin has been confessed and fallen into the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh my, it gives an abstract right straight back to the Creator again. You become a son of God. Abstract title leaders held in the hand of Almighty. Oh my, its redemption means all legal possession, all that has been lost by Adam and Eve. Oh my, what ought that to do to a born again Christian? It's legal possession that the abstract deed, title lead of eternal life, means that you possess everything that Adam and Eve lost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Everything that Adam and Eve lost. They lost their power, you gained their power. They lost their land, you gained their land. They lost their sanity, you gained their sanity. They lost their, their authority, you gained their authority. You believe it? You have the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe it? Oh my, redemption of our inheritance is only for the predestinated bride seed of God. How many believes that tonight? She's the only one that is considered in redemption tonight. Who is this Melchizedek? Uh, January 22nd or February rather in the evening service. He said the predestinated is the only one that's considered in redemption. Did you get it? Let me say that again. The predestinated is the only one that's considered in redemption. People might be making like they think they are, but the real redemption is to those that are predestinated. Amen. Oh, since I saw my name in the book of redemption. I believe that we're living out the book of redemption. You believe that? I believe it's barley harvest now. I believe it's time of redemption now. When Ruth came back into our homeland, it was a barley season time. It was a time of restoration. You believe that? It was a time of the opening of the words. It was a time when God loosed the seals. You believe it? Listen, friends, let me say this. And the seven seals is typed up. Amen. The first three seals deal with the Antichrist spirits. The fourth and the fifth seal deals with the ministry to the Jews. And the seventh seal deals with the Gentile bride coming in, in the last day. It types out the book of Ruth as we know it. Ophrah types the Antichrist church. She kissed the word goodbye. Naomi types uh, the fourth and the fifth seal. The old Orthodox Church teaching uh, roots to lay at the foot of Boaz. And root types the bride in the saints. Oh, we're living in the barley season. The word has been opened up to us. You believe it? You believe that? In the message indictment, he said, I say this under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost uh, who is on the Lord's side. Let him come under this word. You believe it? Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come under this word. You have sicknesses tonight. I feel for you. I have sicknesses. Amen. I have certain things I'm trying to overcome, but bring it under this word. This is the barley harvest. This is the time of redemption. This is the hour where God is revealing who we are. Do you believe that? Do you love him? Are you grateful to be living in this time of the barley harvest? Hallelujah. It's harvest time. It's harvest time. We're not just, just, just anybody. We're the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. We overcame the Antichrist spirits. We overcame all the rest of the things. And we're just standing here as the bride of Christ on the back side of the book. Hearing the thunders of the word of God bring us back to who we are. You believe it? Let me just take about 10 more minutes and then I'll close. Unchained by the anointing. Are you thankful for it tonight? Aren't you grateful for it tonight? Look, you may not feel like it. You may not look like it. You may not even think yourself bride. But it's not what you think. It's what he thinks of you. Hallelujah. It's what he thinks of you. Amen. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are broader than our ways. You believe it? Oh, I love it. Unchained by the anointing and the token message. 
The prophet says, yes, sir, that's what we're supposed to do. You must come under this token. Yes. Hallelujah. Remember, in that day, there'll be an anointing, an unction, a portion of word that will destroy the yokes in our lives. It will. It will destroy the yokes in our lives. Makes no difference what it is. God never specified. He didn't give a long diabolical explanation of what they are. He just says that in that day, the anointing will destroy the yokes. I'm thankful for it. I'm grateful for that anointing. And the prophet says, that's what we're supposed to do. You must come under this token. This is the abstract that breaks the yokes and chains of unbeliefs. Do you believe it? They were saying, church age, in the last day, there's again another people in the land who under their message will be the final voice to the final age who under their message. We're not over the message. We are under the anointing. God's not depending on my anointing to break yokes in your lives. But the anointing that is unction in this age has already worked and is working in our lives tonight. You believe it? Hallelujah. I love that. Under this anointing. You see the voice of this messenger is the voice of Christ which halts Satan's yoke. It is the anointing, uh, and it is the chain breaker tonight. You believe that? I believe this anointing is the chain breaker, and we are all under that anointing. Praise the Lord. Your pastor, myself, and other pastors are not depending on some other anointing. Amen. To bring the bride to perfection. The anointing has already been released in this age. And we're under that anointing. You know why you're growing and this church is growing? Because your pastor is placing you under that anointing. And under that anointing, it destroys and it's a chain breaker in the church. Do you believe that? It is the chain breaker. Hallelujah. It breaks the chain of doubt and sin in our lives. And all who fully comes under this token can appropriate this anointing tonight. I believe the voice of God will destroy anything that wasn't so from the beginning. You believe that? You see many people complain, I have counseled uh, with doctors. I undergo various tests and consume many medicines but no cure. And the doctors say that I have... uh, 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 the doctor has said that I have an incurable disease in my body and my mind those just seem to give over to everything I can seem to overcome my past this is nothing but the chains of Satan it is the chains of Satan some say I have an incurable disease but let me tell you something when you say I'm going to live for Christ. The devil will place on you chains of infirmities and sicknesses trying to cause you to give up and to throw in the towel. But my message to you tonight is as soon as the anointing is poured on you, you will be healed. You believe that? As soon as the anointing is poured on you, you are healed in Jesus' name. You believe that? Hallelujah. Trying to cause you sometimes. The enemy is trying to cause you to do everything to doubt. This word has power to heal you tonight. And when the Holy Spirit comes, this yoke and chain of sickness is broken. And we have great deliverance from that disease. And the body is revived. You believe that tonight? I'm going to believe that God wants to hear you tonight. Amen. He wants to help your family tonight. Amen. He wants to bring you to that place where you can be a strong Christian in the Lord tonight. You can say that I know that Jesus Christ has paid it all, paid it full for me tonight. You see, when the power of this word anointing descends upon you, I want you to understand that the chains of bondage, of worries and pain and infirmities, tumors or heart conditions and diseases are destroyed. Only the anointing destroys the yoke in your life. 
Amen. You believe it tonight? Amen. Let's stand to our feet as our musicians come, please. Perhaps tonight the devil may have bound you chained with depression, chained with lust, chained with unnatural affection, chained by drugs or alcohol, chained in your mind, chained in your uh, uh, finances, chained with discouragement. But I want you to know that this word that you are under, this anointing will destroy the chains in your life. I want you to stop beating up on yourself tonight. Stop sitting there bound, beat up, abused, mistreated, hopeless, lost, undecided, confused, sick, oppressed, depressed, lonely, emasculated. Quit doing all this and say, Lord, I bring myself under this anointing, Lord, this Holy Spirit that I believe that is here tonight. How many believes he's here tonight? The anointing unchained the people of this age. I love what Brother Branham said in the message Invisible Union. He said that germ seed that was in you at the beginning found you tonight. That germ seed that was in you at the beginning found you tonight. How many can say amen to that? Hallelujah. It wasn't that you found God. God found you. That germ seed of life found you tonight. Whatever you're a victim to. I believe the voice of God in this age has declared you unchained from the yokes. In a message expectation, Brother Bram said this. He said, Almighty God, be merciful to the boy. He's standing here. Satan's trying to get him to get to this condition to commit suicide. But thou art here to relief the boy, to make the devil leave him. And thou, O oh God... Thou hast said that these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out the devils. Then upon the authority of God's word as a believer, I now ask that spirit that's on the boy of unbelief to leave him. Go in the name of Jesus Christ and bother him no more. I set him free. Don't come telling me Brother Branham was first, second class or third class, friends. It was the anointing in this age. And the bride is still under that anointing. And if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, the Holy Ghost has set you free tonight. And I set you free. May the enemy be bound and leave this room and torment. Watch this. And torment no one else in Jesus Christ's name. Look, if you're here tonight and you've been struggling with suicidal thoughts, you've been struggling uh, to just, just, just throw it all in, to give up and to go back, I want you to know the anointing went over this age. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free from the spirit of suicide. And may it leave and torment no one else. That's the bride of Christ. No more. You believe it? Show us the Father. It will suffice us. Satan, thou demon of hell, that's bound these children, these Christian people, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come out of the people and turn them loose and let them go. Do you believe that? That's for the bride of Christ. Do you believe that said the Lord? It's for the bride. Hey, Brother Branham, that, that, was, that was back then. Let me tell you something. God's word never changes. What there was then is what it is now. That same message is just alive tonight. I'm going to give you some abbreviation tonight. And right where you're standing, I say in the name of Jesus Christ, we have the greatest anointing and the prophet's anointing amongst this church tonight. And whatever it is you're struggling with, whatever it is, slip your hands up and say tonight, Lord, the anointing will break the yoke. I want to give you an abbreviation of some of the commands by the anointing in this age. There's over a thousand of them, but let me give you some. 
you can reach up in faith and be unchained by the anointing. Brother says, suffering with hard condition? Thus said the Lord. You can be healed if you just raise your hands. You've got a kidney disorder, suffering with this kidney infection. You can be healed right now. If you believe, lift your hands up. Thus said the Lord, you're healed. Suffering with cancer, it's in the colon. This cancer has moved in a mass in the stomach. I see it's going to kill you. But if you believe, lift your hands up and say, God, I renounce this cancer in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, she's suffering with this stomach trouble. I see her stuffing. You can't eat. You can only digest your food. When the food goes down, you're having a hard time. Indigestion. In today's terminology, it will be, it will be acid reflux. Amen. You're suffering with that. Lift your hands up right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you can be healed. She's suffering with an ulcer also. That ulcer is going to leave and you're going to be well tonight. Suffering with this hideous power that's bothering her. Satan, come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a spirit of torment. And it's tormenting this woman. I wonder how many here tonight. Don't, don't, don't be ashamed, friends. The devil is tormenting you in your dreams. Satan is messing with you in nightmares. Amen is messing in your mind. I say in the name of Jesus Christ, right now, you can be set free by the Holy Ghost. You believe it tonight? Hallelujah. Yes, they're nightmares. They're bothering you, Satan. Come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. They'll never bother you again in Jesus' name. You're sitting there. You're looking at me, suffering with diabetes. Listen, he's looking in this time. This wasn't for just people back then. This is this time. I wonder how many in here are suffering with diabetes. Don't be afraid. Just lift your hand. If you've got diabetic condition, God can heal you right now. How many believe that? God can heal you right now of diabetes. Hallelujah. Diabetes, diabetic spirit is nothing to God. You can be unchained by the anointing tonight. He said that diabetic condition has had you bound for many years. But I see that light over you. You know what that light is? That's that Logos that came out of God. How many ever seen a picture of the lights in Houston, Texas? That's the pillar fire. It's the anointing. How many believes the anointing is with us tonight? How many believes the pillar of fire is with us tonight? Young people, you've got power to overcome. Hallelujah. You're going to be the young man that overcome in this age. You'll be the young man that will carry the torch to the end tonight. You believe that? He said you've been suffering back there with a mental nervousness. Our age, we're all nervous. I'm nervous. We're all nervous. Anxiety strikes us sometimes. Friends, it just overwhelms you sometimes. Anxiety is nervousness. You get so, the older I get sometimes, I feel like I'm just, what's wrong with me? I, I can't seem to overcome. I can't seem to, why am I so anxious about things? The anointing says, you're suffering with a mental nervousness. It's anxiety, brother or sister, standing back there. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy Spirit has healed you of it. That's a demon of nervousness. Thou spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're exposed. Come out of the woman. Leave her in Jesus' name. We charge Satan, thou devil. Thou discriminating evil power that bound these people. You that's done this evil, you've lost the battle in Jesus' name. Thou demon, I adjure you to come out of these people in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave every one of them in Jesus' name and may they be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. You believe that tonight? Hallelujah. 
as I adjure you, leave every sick person and get into outer darkness in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, you evil spirit, you've defeated. You're defeated. You come out of them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cast you away. Leave this building. You believe that? You believe that tonight? I'm not a prophet, not a son of a prophet. I have nothing special to give to you, but I'm giving you commands in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you the words never fail. They're still in this room tonight. The anointing is still here to set you free of every, every strongholds that are in your life. Satan, you have held them captive so long you're exposed tonight. Satan, you have defied. You have defied the doctor. You have hid from him, but you can't hide from God. You believe it? Hallelujah! You can't hide from God. You have diabetes and the blood. Don't you worry. Jesus Christ will give you a brand new transfusion. Earnestly contending for the faith. Once delivered, 1955, August the 15th. He said, I cure this disease. Friends, let me tell you something. We had forgotten what Jesus looked like. We had forgotten what God was all about. But God had to send Brother William Miriam Branham to remind us of who Jesus was. You know what he did? He lifted him out of history. The message lift Jesus straight out of history and brought it back upon the church. He brought back resurrection power upon the church. Do you believe it? He said, I cure this disease. Oh, Satan, you have hid it from the doctor, but you can't hide it from God. Come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. I lay my hands upon you and I bind this nervous spirit that's upsetting your stomach in this condition in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe that? You have a desire in your heart right, right now that God, you want God to do something for you. You have a desire in your heart. You believe that God could reveal it to me. He said, all right, you're praying for somebody else too. It's somebody that's got cataracts on their eyes. They're afraid they're going to go blind. That's true, but now you believe for her and she won't go blind if you believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ, sister, I give you your healing. You believe it? Had he right? I give you your voice in Jesus' name. I said, little fishy, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give you your life. That little fish turned around, swam right up to the river, a river as hard as it can go. And said she had a sinner husband and sinner children, and she was suffering with some sort of disease. I don't know what it is. Just listen to the tapes. And then the Holy Spirit came uh, around and said, Thus saith the Lord, I give you your husband. Oh, Lord. I don't know what you're, what, what's going on in your life. But I feel like the Holy Spirit sent me from Tennessee to tell you, I give you your husband. Can you handle it tonight? Can you handle it tonight? I give you your husband. I give you your children. I heal you. Today she is well. Her husband was in one of at the altar, first one at the altar last night, and her children all saved. Absolute. And when you're in trouble and trust in Christ, there's only one uh, thing sure. The Holy Spirit will point us to the Word that will guide us to the North Star to deliver everything we have need of. He is our absolute, unchained by the anointing. I want you to say it with me tonight. Anointing, fall on me. I feel like I'm going to lose my mind. But say it again with me. Anointing, fall on me. Sometimes I don't feel like the bride, but anointing, fall on me. I don't know how my family is going to come in. 
but anointing fall on me. I can't praise you bound in these chains. Anointing fall on me. Let the word unchain you saints tonight. I can't overcome, but anointing fall on me. I can't seem to keep the victory, but anointing fall on me. I can't search, but anointing fall on me. I believe it tonight. I've taken much of your time and forgive me. No, don't forgive me. I meant to say what God has placed in my heart. Brother Daniel was there at our church a couple of weeks ago. I had intention to ask him about coming to preach our 27th anniversary meeting in August. Something inside of me was just a little like, you know what? You better beat him to it because he's getting ready to ask you something. <laughs> and at the close of the service, he said, I normally don't do this, but I'd like to invite this whole church to come to our 22nd anniversary, and I'd like to ask Pastor Joseph Hammond to come and to preach our meeting. And the moment he said that, the Holy Spirit spoke into my spirit, unchained by the anointing. So friends, I don't know what you make of the service tonight. But I want you to know that tonight, even under the preaching of the Word of God, that the Holy Spirit has unchained of many of you. And you're not leaving here the same person. Because you know what? Anointing fall on me. I want the anointing. You all sing that song. Anointing fall on me. Amen. I want the anointing to fall on me. It's very simple. It says, anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. It makes no difference where I'm at or what I'm going through, but anointing fall on me. Are you ready for it tonight? You feel like God has touched you tonight. How many feel you can leave this place and say, Lord, I'm so glad I went to church. Not because Pastor Hammond has preached, but because the Holy Spirit was here. Because your pastor saw fit to call the meeting. And because he did, Satan fought the service. Satan tried to bind the service up. But the anointing has broke the yoke tonight. Do you believe it? Do you love him tonight? Do you appreciate him tonight? Hallelujah. Praise his name. Let's sing a song. Amen and amen. Everybody lift your hands up. Worship Jesus. Anointing. Hold on the search. Anointing. Break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Take it out of this audience in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose this church. Get this people free by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. He's got it all in control. Got it all in control. He put that reassurance way down in my soul. He's got it all in control. I put my life. my life in His hands. So every road I walk down, I know is in His plan. I put my life in His hands. He's got it all in control. He's got it all. Got it. 
thankful that he's got it all in control. Well, I was certainly blessed by the word this evening for the local saints here. He just kind of followed right along with a lot of what our pastor's been preaching the past few weeks, and I just love to see the Lord do that. It's so wonderful. Let's try the key of A. Oh, El Allah, Elohim, how we long to worship you. Oh, El Allah, Elohim, Lord, we long to worship you. Oh, yes, El certainly tried to stop the meeting, so Brother Joseph left a day early to come down here. He missed the storm. You know, God had him leave a day early, or else he could have been caught up there in that storm. And then he got our pastor sick, got one of our deacons sick, but we pressed on, and we were blessed tonight. We're very, very thankful. couple of announcements before we go service in the morning at 11 come praying and believing to what God has for us time changes tonight you lose that we all lose that precious hour of sleep um, so don't forget that in the morning um, and the little kids 
to stay immediately after service to practice a song for in the morning. Um, so if the little ones can remember that or their parents hold them here, we'd appreciate that. Who's been blessed to be in church tonight? Amen. Amen. We'll sing this song and then we'll be dismissed. Key of F. Oh, nothing's too big for my God. No, 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 nothing's too big for my God. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be depressed. Nothing's too big for God when I'm in His grace. Well, He's higher than the highest mountain. Than the deepest sea, stronger than a locomotive, faster than a bullet speed, he's wiser than a man named Webster, eternally DT. Nothing's too big for God, no impossibility. I'm singing, nothing's too big for my God. No, 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 nothing. Oh my God, not going to be discouraged, I'm not going to be depressed, nothing too big for God when I'm in His grace, oh never has there been a problem, bigger than my God can solve, oh never has there been a question, baffled in the mind of God. Rise above our enemies. Nothing's too big for God, no impossibility. Oh, there's nothing too big for my God. No, 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 nothing's too big for my God. I'm not gonna be discouraged. I'm not gonna be 